Thank you, guys. Thank you, Dr. Curtis, uh, the Hufford family, Mrs. Hufford, uh, faculty and staff and students uh, for having me back here today. This is really special. This is a little bit different than the architecture lectures you've, you've heard before, partly because I'm going to put a different spin on it and partly because, um, let's see, how do we go? Uh, partly because uh, Wick was my friend. Um, he was our friend. He was our classmate. He was my JV hockey teammate. He finished his checks and was really funny. He was Captain Deerfield, and he had many interests, as Dr. Curtis just told you. He wasn't afraid of unchartered territory uh, in his ideas and his friendships, and that was something that was really special in getting to know him, that he took on passions that maybe you know, other people weren't taking on. He, he really didn't have bounds for his ideas. At the age of 15, 16, 17, you know, 18, it, it, those kinds of diversity of thought you don't find very often, but Wick had it, and, and those of us who also shared those passions um, were drawn to him, and it was very, very special. This is a great shot here of Tate and Wick. Um, I think that uh, Morseman might have taken it after a JV hockey practice that we were all playing around with, so... This is definitely a gem that, that we all love as a shot. Uh, I think that Wick would want me today to talk about my story a little bit and, and not just click through slides of projects. I think you guys would probably enjoy that too. So we're just going to tell you, this is going to be a little bit of a play in three acts of some stories throughout my career. <clears throat> um, I'm going to work backwards, meaning I'm going to go from the, the very recent, and we're going to go all the way back to the Deerfield time of, of when I was here uh, you know, out in the seats, f figuring out what it was that I wanted to do. You know, this presentation was not designed to be glossy or sexy. It's just kind of a way to expose you guys to to the, the life of an architect. And I think that Wick would like how we're going to do this very much. So, I want to start with the first category is on site, and this is uh, at Fahey Design Build, which is where I work right now. Um, There'll be, you know, common themes in architecture that you learn over the course of your career. I've been out of Deerfield for 15 years, and I've been practicing architecture after my master's for seven years now. And so you begin to develop some ideas. I guess you could say in my career, I'm in kind of the, the late adolescence, you know, early adulthood of, of one's architecture career. So you're, you're, you're beginning to realize how things work. And one of them that I want to talk about today is that, that architecture, architecture excuse me, is an act of immense teamwork. Uh, it's about people working together to get something done. And oftentimes, a singular name is assigned to a building or a project, but any of us who've ever done it, we know that this is actually a massive act of teamwork. And the other thing is a little bit more complex, but I think you guys can handle it. It's that architecture comes from good systems. What I mean by systems is that components in buildings can be broken down, and you can understand each component individually, and how they go together will make up how, what that project is. And so, whenever you're struggling, whenever you have a challenge on your hands, at any point in your career, you just break down the item to what is that piece, what is that component, how does it work, and how does it go with everything else. So, let's get into it. So, Fahey Design Build, what I do, I'm a contractor, I'm gonna walk around a little bit. So, I'm a contractor, uh, as well as an architect. And that, what that means is that the typical delivery process of a building or a project is that we are the designers and we are the builders. We're responsible for making the work in the end of the day. A typical process would be what's called um, uh, a uh, uh, design bid build, which means that the owner hires an architect, it gets bid out to different contractors, and then the contractor builds it. What we do is we hold two of those contracts together with the owner that we build the work that we design. It's actually quite special because we have double jeopardy, meaning that we can mess up twice or we can succeed twice, obviously with all of our projects, is to do a really good job on both. So let's jump into it. So the project I'm gonna show you today is in Hudson Yards. Now, we did not design or build this. This is a massive project on the west side of Manhattan. Millions and millions of square feet of office, residential and retail space. What we have inside this massive complex on the third floor is this little guy. This is 1,600 square feet that we got. And I think this is a perfect project because I can get through it really quickly and it's going to show the whole arc of an architectural process that just happened very recently. Literally, this project is just about to finish up and it was done recently, so let's jump into it. Here's a story on site that I think you guys will think is 
hopefully quite funny. So I'm there as a construction superintendent. This is Macho, he's my foreman. Up here, you're looking at no-hub pipe. This, these, are, these are pipes that go together. It's the sewer from above. We're basically in the space uh, that would be below us. We're gonna have about $25,000 worth of merchandise in here. We're making sure that all of these guys work. We turn on the water, we put it down the drains, and water starts pouring down everywhere. I'm sitting there, you know, <laughs> drenched in water. My foreman is drenched in water, and we're trying to figure out what's going on. Well, what we found was that a no-hub coupling, one of these guys up here that was installed by someone who was working a little too fast, the way they work is your fingers interlap like this, and if your pinky, say, is out and you cinch down, then you don't have a good connection and water starts pouring everywhere. This is just one of the many examples on site of how stuff can get massively messed up by just working a little too fast. Back to the teamwork aspect, it takes the whole group to get something done. I picked this one out first because it's just kind of a little thing of construction that you gotta do. Uh, jumping in here, you know, wiring. Am I a wiring expert? Absolutely not, but I'm on site with my tradesmen trying to figure out how we're gonna get this thing finished and you know, I'm asking, hey, what is this and what is that? putting the pieces together to understand how this is an electric duct heater, <laughs> how this electric duct heater is gonna get wired up and is gonna work. And basically, the communication between different teams, I have my HVAC guy in one hand, the electrician on the other hand, and they need to speak to each other to make sure it works. So basically, at that moment, being the quarterback of something that I really don't co totally understand, but you had to help people connect the ideas. So we're gonna come back to just the architecture side of it. it. That was some of the construction woes, but here we are, 31st, 32nd, 33rd, 10th Avenue. Get a sense of scale here. Um, the idea for this space that we had, here, here it is. That, that's me down there looking at it, and we're, we're looking in at a concrete pit right now, and we need to turn this into a coffee shop. So in design, I like to think is you need to have a big idea first in terms of your process. And, and I'm standing over there thinking, hey, what should our big idea for the shop be? And I think about 10 Bells in Paris. And 10 Bells is um, it's a coffee shop. Just, there are tons of coffee shops in Paris. But this one particularly was pretty cool because the windows open out and engage the street. You can see the curb right there. And I had this idea that we could take in this mall, right, we could take the front and engage it out. And so this is a little sketch diagram that we did. So we're gonna take the space and we're gonna try to engage the street, which is really a mall, with connectivity to the front. And that's gonna be the big idea of the space. Okay, so we started with a big idea. We now have a diagram. I actually drew this a couple days ago. We had this on a napkin, I think, and lost it. But uh, moving right along. Then you take it into the drawing act. Like the next phase of this is okay. We have we have a loose idea, now we need to actually make it architecture. First thing is we gotta start drawing it. Okay, how is it actually gonna look in terms of proportion, scale, door on one side, windows are opening up, how are they gonna open up? Okay, we get a sense of what we wanna do, the client signs off on it, and we make a couple renders. Now these, are not gonna, these renderings aren't gonna win any awards, but um, they're, I think they're, they're good enough to show you the light and the space and, and the materials of what we're trying to do. So then we turn those into, into technical drawings. The thing I wanted to, this part is, is really important, the technical drawing side of it is because you can, have, you can have a big idea and you can have a picture, but if you don't understand the next step in architecture of actually developing that into, into, into a, 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 a tangible thing that's gonna work, then all you have is just an idea on paper. And so this is the first step. And in architecture, we have these little symbols. It's basically like another language. It's kind of like Greek. And you talk and you say, hey, I'm gonna draw this and I'm gonna blow this up and I'm gonna tell you what that is, right? And so that over here, this little guy, that little tag here is saying on the sheet, whatever, whatever, I'm gonna take that guy and I'm gonna make him there. And that tag up there is that guy that's up there. What we're doing here is I'm, I'm telling you as the builder, which is also me, <laughs> is that this is how we're gonna build the countertop, <laughs> all right? This is, how, this is how we're gonna build the window. It's gonna go in like this. It's gonna be connected to this track up here. Yada, yada, you, you, you get the idea that this is how stuff happens. All right, so once we have the drawings done, now we're back on site. We're back on site and they've put up the, the uh, related, the landlord has put up the barricade in front of our space. And it's time to take this thing, which we all work together to figure out how it's gonna work to make that thing a reality. So let's start doing it. Let's start building Let's get into it. So construction sites are pretty messy, but you see 
move it along here, windows are going in, and you get the, what's really great is the reality is beginning to come through, but it still looks like a mess. And then this was recently where we actually got it buttoned up. Here you can see where, where the windows are starting to open back to that original idea that you could, the final idea is that, hey, you could be sitting at this coffee bar, the windows could be open, and this is the street and the road, and you'd be engaging with that road, someone walking by, you'd have a coffee and start up a conversation, and you, you, you would feel like you're out on the urban street. The thing that's important about this process, this isn't an amazing, as I said, this isn't a glossy presentation. This isn't an amazing project, but I wanted to start with it because it's very recent, and it shows in 12 weeks the process of sketching something to actually making something, and this is how it works. Because um, that's what it was before, and this is what it is now. And for me, personally, as an architect and a, and a builder, this is the awesome stuff uh, that, that keeps us coming back. There's a shot from the other side, and that's that project. At Fahey, we also do fine homes and interiors, and, and these are some, some other projects of a bathroom and a bathtub here, like really great details and panel work. Um, here's an amazing kitchen using uh, reclaimed wood in Tribeca, a really sweet wine cellar that we did for a client that had a great collection and also ceiling rafters up there. So this is kind of to show what we're doing recently in the design build world, meaning we are designing and building the projects at the same time. The, the second act here in this, in this story that I wanted to tell is my time at uh, Richard Meyer and Partners Architect, which was the five years after I got out of Cornell, uh, was where I thought I was gonna spend the rest of my career. This is an amazing architecture firm with a, a legacy in the 20th century that uh, can be compared you know, with the top architects that there are, and th this was gonna be it for me. We were, we were this amazing team, there I am over on the right, this is my group on, working on this tower, six years before as, a, as an intern at Cornell, there I am over on the right in the model shop at Meyer. everyone starts out working on models, and there you can see the, the two pictures of the team. The reason I showed this picture, it's really meaningful for me, is that these, the, the people that are in this shot are some of the most important people uh, in my life. And I don't take that lightly when I say that, that uh, Ivan is one of my best friends and works with me now at Fahey Design Build. And Rennie back there and Kevin and Sharon and Guillermo, we, are, we were the people that put together this tower that I want to show you now. This is a 40-story residential tower I worked on. These are some 3D models of, of, of what this tower was going to be. Here's a sketch that we put together showing the shade and the, we called this thing in the front the shield as it moved in and out. This is a rendering that we did of the top, which would be that portion right up there to show how the, the apartments then went into the mechanical zone and then as I said before, the drawings, you got to work the two together to show how the drawings work with the rendering. So this is the early process. I was cut loose. So Rennie, Rennie's, Rennie's in charge, he's the partner. I'm the senior designer on the, on the project, going to be the project architect, but at this point, Rennie cuts me loose and says, hey, Will, we need to figure out what the skin is of this guy here. We called it the sail. We didn't really have an idea for it. And so this is the process of sitting down and beginning to actually put to size what, you know, we know we need to have windows, or residential apartments, what do they look like? So this is part of the process of sketching out what this thing is going to be. And the, w this is one of my favorite sketches because it went from, you know, went from that to that to, oh, here's Ivan <laughs> looking at the model. Here's the, uh, here's the, um, can that spot? So th this shows the um, beginning of the transition, thank you, from what this becomes to then the drawing of that and then the next phase of actually when it starts to get built. So I finished off at Meyer as the project architect of a 40-story tower with my best friends. You'd think, hey, that's your dream job. That's what you're going to do. That's, it, for me, I, it was everything. And I had to make a really tough choice. This is another favorite shot of mine of the construction. Here's the, um, the first panels being put in of my first project that I, that, I, that I worked on here of this tower. So this was, everyone says you have a first child moment. This was really mine on that first day when these went in. But what I wanted to talk about here is, is, is an important thing to address, and th that is that with greatness uh, can come great character flaw as well. And uh, March of last year uh, came out in the New York Times that Richard Meyer was alleged uh, to have sexually harassed women over the last 30 years. And just let that, you know, 
hit you for a second, and, and women that worked in our firm. You know, I'm getting goosebumps right now uh, because it moves me so much. Uh, and, and I don't, the victims are the most important part of this. The alleged victims are the most important part of, of this story, but it also, this is a story that affected families and lives and careers. Um, and, and I wanted to talk about it because it was a moment for me in my career, uh, working backwards as we're doing in this arc, where I needed to make a decision. And I said that I can't keep working here anymore. And I made the decision to leave that team that I showed you, basically my dream job, uh, and I handed in my resignation uh, because I couldn't work at a place where someone had been allegedly sexually harassing employees for the last 30 years. And so that was the end of my time at Meyer. And that's when I took on, that's when I went into design build, became the project manager at Fahey, and said, I want to get back to using my hands. And that's what I want to come back to now is, is the arc moving backwards of, of, of time. We're coming to architecture school and beyond. So... Architecture school is getting closer to, to where you guys are now in high school. And the transition, yeah, oh yeah, this was funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> Use a letter opener, you never know when you're going to keep them. Uh, this, was, this was my, this was my ex I had received my acceptance to Clemson University where I did my undergraduate study in architecture. However, I had not been accepted into the architecture school and the chairman of the School of Architecture then sent me this handwritten note saying, Will, oh, what was that, on March 15th, 2004, said, you've been accepted, you're welcome to come and study architecture here at Clemson. And this was a really important, and I just wanted to share that with you because it's connecting directly. And I was over in the mail room, I'm sure you guys still have the mail room, you know, still have my you know, fat fingers jamming it in there, opening this guy up. And that's, that's the story of how my architecture career really took off, right there. But um, to give you a little bit of kind of education, because I think it's important for, for you guys working backwards, right, we're, we're, we're here at, at Deerfield now, you really have three options. You can go, you can go to a B-ARC, uh, Cornell is a, is a, is a B-ARC program, Bachelor of Architecture, it's five years. You can do what I did as a four-year Bachelor of Arch, Architecture, or, or excuse me, Bachelor of Arts or Science in Architecture, which is not a professional degree, or you can just go to, you know, any, any regular college degree, and here's how the path works, right? A B-ARC with a pro degree allows you to go directly to the exam track and the work experience, call this kind of the residency if, in, if it, you're a doctor, right? Uh, all of these guys, you then go into your master's program, where I did mine at, at Cornell, and then with your professional degree, you're allowed to take the exams. They're actually, I was told there's six, I had seven, and then you become a registered architect. So within my process at, at, at Clemson, I was in design build, working again as a team, that's a theme of today, putting, putting stuff together and learning the craft of architecture through building with other people. Architecture is teamwork. Understanding the systems of how the structure and the cladding goes together to go from this to this is, is, is pretty cool. So this was, my, this was my final project at Clemson. It was a mini museum in the, in the, uh, the rotunda of the College of Charleston. <laughs> Griffin remembers that. So. It's a good, it was a good project, but there was a lot that went into it. A lot of people working together, a lot of different components to get this project. Uh, on a different side of things, I did at Cornell, I did my, my master's thesis, was uh, much headier and didn't have anything to do with building stuff. This was all about ideas of architecture, complexities of, 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 of time and space and money and the world. And there were two educations that kind of came together in the end to, to make who I am the point of this is that there are lots of different ways of studying architecture, and, and you can turn out to do lots of different things. This is funny, right? To become a registered architect, you need to take the exams. This was my exam manual. It's called Ballast, right? The author of that. And uh, this was my Instagram post before I took my... This was not my last exam. Uh, you know, hopefully this is our last journey. The banana didn't do anything for me. I did not pass this exam. Uh, <laughs> I, I had seven exams, it took me ten tries, don't worry, you'll be fine. All right, there I am, you know, studiously trying to figure out this stuff, you know, as the, the old SNL skit, I was told there'd be no math, there is math, uh, and it's, it's, quite, it's quite, quite complex, I'm sure there are a lot of dancer. this is, you know, you could probably explain this to me again here. Uh, but the point, <clears throat> the point now, we're getting, I'm going to wrap this up here for you guys, but the, the, this slide is... Um, these are all my friends I just pulled off of LinkedIn, and I want, to show, I want to show you guys a range of different people. And so, 
What's, what's important about this slide, everyone, is, uh, is that when you, these, everyone here studied architecture at least with their undergrad degree. And they're doing totally different things right now than being a typical architect or the process which I explained today of what I do. I'll just go through it really quickly. Andrea, she does set design for, um, for Hollywood out in LA. Uh, Andrew's at, at WeWork, he's doing design software for WeWork. Armando is one of my best friends from Cornell, he's a professor at Texas Tech. Colin McCrone, he designs software for Autodesk, which is AutoCAD, the computer program that, that is what makes uh, uh, digital drawings. Jake Rudin is at Adidas and he's designing all sorts of shoes and cool stuff for Adidas. Katie Yang is one of my closest friends. She designs, she's at Estee Lauder and she's the, the head of Asian store development at Estee Lauder, so she's, she's a boss. Uh, uh, Jin, another close friend of mine from Cornell, she's a developer now at GID. She was actually the developer side for that 40-story tower I showed you, so we reunited on that project. Paul Kennedy is down in Charleston and he's doing uh, historic preservation and development work uh, in, a, in a practice there. And Pascal, another friend of mine, is, is another boss in New York and she's paving the way for African American women in the field of, of architecture winning an immense amount of awards. The point is, is that you can go to architecture school and, and your idea of what being an architect is, you know, sh shouldn't be so narrow. It should be actually quite broad and think about architecture school as a way to, to become in the future. Um, so finishing up here, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, support and, and what that means to me. This is kind of the difficult part of the presentation that you know, I ask you guys to kind of help me through here as we finish up. Um, so becoming an architect or going to architecture school, uh, there is some support required in doing that. You don't just kind of just doesn't come from you, and I think a lot of it uh, Wick would have agreed with was that you have ideas that are diverse and you want to try to explore them. Uh, and to do that, though, you need you know, friends are an integral part of that, and I have a lot of friends here in the, in the first row, and, and you have conversations with people when you be become interested in things, and you talk about them, and they support you in wanting to do that thing. You know, we saw amazing pictures and, and videos of the play and, and such talented people that are doing diverse things. Or whether it's architecture class, it's all about discovery. And having these conversations with your friends about what you might be interested in is just massively important. And I wanted to tell you that. Just reach out to your friends and, and ask them if they're, what they're interested in, what they want to do. Uh, my roommate, Jay Griffin, came up here uh, when we were at Deerfield, and I wanted to just, you know, remind him that, that he was one of the instrumental people in me becoming an architect because he supported, while I was here and going to architecture school, he supported that, that path. And he said, yeah, that's pretty cool, you should do that. You know, it might not have been more than that, but really that process, those conversations were, were, super, were super important. Sorry, Jay, no, it was, it was a lot more than that. Jay was with me a lot. What I want to come back to the last thing, sorry, I'm not going to sell Griff short. We were at a restaurant in Charleston, uh, and he told me, this is, this is, I'm going to end on, on this one. Um, he told me, he said, you know what, I don't know if you remember this. He said, you're really good at this. And uh, that's when I was finishing up the project, um, the design build project down in, in Charleston. And he said, hey, you're really good at this. And I know that sounds really basic right now, but with your friends, it's important to just remind them, hey, you guys, you're really good at this and you can keep on going. And so to finish up right now, I just want to, um, there are some people who aren't here as well. Um, if you guys remember uh, Tim England and Ted Litwin and Jamie Captine uh, are people that pushed me and, and, and helped me to discover who I wanted to be uh, as an architect and, and asked me to bring the character and the qualities that I learned here into my profession and that I, I, I hope that, that I'm doing that and I, and I hope that you guys uh, will want to do that too. Uh, in architecture or whatever field it is that, that you guys choose. So that's all I have for you for, the, for this year's lecture. But thank you very much. <laughs>